Being a sports fan, I can tell you I'm quite out of my league. Wow. <laughs> no, but for real, I was just... Wow. Yeah, we'll go into that. Playing it safe with that one, aren't you? <laughs> you better get them all out of the way while you can. Make sure you only hit home runs. I don't want to strike a loss on this one. Oh, well, you almost had it. Yeah, no, I was stretching. Yeah. yeah. Came up a little short. Stop. <laughs> Please. Uh, did you catch that? <laughs> They're the worst team in the league. Like it, Andre. <laughs> in the worst neighborhood in the city. Wow. But they're about to get some help from the last person they ever expected. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to this episode of Dudes Watch a Movie Podcast. Uh, This time, definitely going to remember to do an introduction because we don't do them anymore. We have lost that. Uh, And I feel like the seven people still watching are starting to forget who's who. uh, I am the notorious J and G. With me is Dead Sprocket, uh, and we're uh, bringing to you all this wonderful podcastness, uh, bouncing off the last movie, which was Constantine, starring Keanu Reeves. We decided to go with another Keanu Reeves movie, this time being Hardball. Yes, I like it. Two thousand one. 2001. By the way, I'm going to guess your correlations here, and mm-hmm. I'm probably wrong, other than the fact that it stars Keanu Reeves. Mm-hmm. Keanu Reeves is smoking. Keanu yep. Reeves is in a church. Yep. Keanu Reeves wears a suit. Yep. Keanu Reeves cries. Mm-hmm. That's about all I got so far. That's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. It was mostly Keanu Reeves, uh, lots of church stuff, like at the very beginning when you first see him, it's like, we're watching Hardball or Constantine. What's going on? He circled right back around to that, too. Uh, and then... Um, your relationship with with generic white girl. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I may take uh, back that Keanu Reeves cries. I don't think he cries in Constantine. He's too much of a badass in that film. He's uh, he's got uh, younger, uh, not mentors, but younger mentees. I guess I don't know the word I'm looking for. That'd be right. Pupils. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um. So why don't you uh, go through your list here? First of all, you know what we said we were gonna start the uh, a new little bit if one of us hasn't seen the movie where uh, before we watched it you put what you thought it was going to be based on whatever knowledge you had so pre-movie thoughts um honestly i'm not a huge fan of sports fan or sports fan films sports ball films Mm -hmm. um i wasn't really feeling going into this one only because i'm not a huge fan of sports films uh just because i don't sports ball um, the only one I remember watching solidly was Remember the Titans, and we had to watch that in high school for some reason. I can't remember why, but I was just okay with it because we wasn't doing schoolwork. Because they wanted us to teach, they wanted to teach us lessons about diversity in our school that was very not diverse. <laughs> I <true>. guess. <laughs> yeah, you're right. And I think about it. Um, but uh, that being said, I've never seen this film, but I give it a decent eye. What I think about it, and so far, what I thought about the film before watching the film, like what I thought it was going to be about, um, was with the name Hardball, I'm going to assume it's a sports ball movie, and if it's anything like any other one that I've seen, um, it's either about a whole team who either A, sucks and will rise like any other fucking sports ball movie, or B, well, that's really all there is, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. At me. Mm-hmm. I dare you. Yeah. So... That's my uh, that was my take before watching it. There's so. other there's other sports movie tropes. Rocky doesn't win in the first sports movie he's in. What about the others? Oh, he starts to. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Eventually, <laughs> they just made the movie longer. This is Urban Mighty Ducks. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Uh, and this is also another uh, in the line of the classic white person gets control of the urban youth to teach, but ends up learning about themselves. <laughs> Uh, a la uh, Dangerous Minds, which is famous for Gangster's Paradise being in the soundtrack. Uh, Half Nelson, which has, uh, fuck, who is it? Mm, Ryan Gosling, uh, who's teaching the Urban Youth and Freedom Riders, which is uh, the Million Dollar Baby Girl. What's Hillary that, Swank. What's that one movie about the teacher who teaches the kids in the urban school? I literally just gave you three. No, but I mean, he's like a teacher 
and it's that really weird wacky actor who's not very good he's got a really weird face boy I'm not gonna remember it I just remember the cover it has like an afro and there's just like a car driving around it or some shit this is what VHS I live with. Rentals. Yeah, holy yeah. shit. I was supposed to get a movie out of that? I mean, you <laughs> Coach got, Carter. <laughs> you found better things out of vaguer descriptions. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. This, this man knows a lot about oh shit. Oh my god. You're uh, getting better at that. The intro credit font reminds me of old school Eminem. <laughs> I wrote it reminded me of Little Rascals. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much the same thing. That chalkboard writing. Uh... <laughs> who who in who in this movie? Well, first off, I'd like to say this is directed by Ro- Brian Robbins, um, with the writers of Daniel Coyle, who apparently wrote the book, and John Gattins, who did the screenplay. Mm. Um, our cast consists of Keanu Reeves as Connor O'Neill, Diane Lane as Elizabeth Wilkes, known as Sister Wilkes, but I don't understand the sister in the name at the beginning. It's a Catholic school, uh, I suppose. Um, John Hawks as Tiki Tobin who I believe should have been played by uh, Steve Buscemi. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, then we have Brian C. Heron as Andre Ray Peets, Michael Perkins as Kofi Evans, Dwayne Warren as Jerry G. Baby Evans, um, Julian Griffith as Jefferson Albert Tibbs, Michael B. Jordan as Jamal. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just the name. He didn't get a last name. They just gave him Jamal. Um, we have A. Dellen. Jamal Ellis. is actually his last name, just so you know. Oh, really? Yeah. They didn't give him a first name then? He's got a first name. They say it. Why didn't they include it in the cast? They call him by his first name towards the end. I guess I he sees him when he's a member of the gang, and he calls him by his full name when he says, Sup, Jamal. <sighs> Is that tea hot? Continue. Anyway, uh, where was I? Yes, Michael B. Jordan. And <laughs> A. Dillon Ellis Jr. as Miles Penfield II. Brian M. Reed as Raymond Ray Ray Bennett. Christopher mm-hmm. Lofton as Clarence. Mm-hmm. Michael mm-hmm. McClone yep, as Jimmy yep. Fleming. Mm-hmm. Um, Sammy Sosa as himself. He was in this. I wasn't expecting him to be in there, honestly. I thought they were just going to keep the whole back turned to him and maybe have a jersey that just said Sosa. Just call it there. That would have um, been a little so-so. God damn it. <laughs> um, I want to start off by the reception of this film. I, okay. I copied and pasted it in here, but apparently it, it gave, uh, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a rating of 39% um, based on 100 reviews. Um, although Hardball contains some touching moments, they are not enough to trans- transcend the sports formula. Yes. Um, and then there's another part on here where I just wonder, Keanu Reeves' performance earned him a Razzie Award, nominated for Worst Actor, oh, also for Sweet November, but he lost the award to Tom Green for Freddy Got Fingered. Hmm. Uh, I, I didn't think his acting was that bad. No, I, I've seen I, him in I worse. I found it super enjoyable. <laughs> right. It was pretty legit. I I'm, mean, sometimes. Personally. Other times, he, he I was... I, Made me realize he's got a little bit of Nick Cage in him. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in the scene with the door and the, and the running back <laughs> he kept and going forth. Back I was like, forth. am I supposed to be taking him seriously? What's happening? Like, is he supposed to be angry? He but... was super stressed out and didn't... He, he was supposed to be conflicted, but, like, those scenes or the scenes where he's drunk and he's, like, unleashing on people and he get, He decided this character was going to be really uh, manic with his arm movements. Ha! <laughs> 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 so... I found him very enjoyable. I was, uh, I was, con- I just, I didn't like his little thing where he hated being talked down to. As being a man who plays a lot of bets, you'd think that'd be something you just yeah. get used to being, you know, hazed on, I suppose. But don't talk down to me, man. You don't know so shit about those kids. Right. Jesus <laughs> Christ. I mean, he was right, though. It's true. I think that was supposed to be like the the racist moment of the movie, but it, it was kind of nox. He's like, go coach some black kids. I'm like, I mean. I'll say after watching uh, Bill and Ted the other day, this is definitely a step up from his acting. <laughs> <laughs> what was the comment you made yesterday about it? It's the only movie where he never had to act. <laughs> he just played himself. Whoa. Uh, if only that would have stuck around. Yeah. You know what's crazy is this might have been his follow-up to The Matrix, maybe? I don't know if he did another movie between there. Matrix would have been 99, I think. This is 2000. He surely he would have done another movie between there. But it's just like this is where you can see they were like, he's a, he's a, he's continuing his ability to be the lead character in a movie. We can just put him in there and people will go see it. And apparently they did not. No, which is a bummer because I like this movie. Although this is probably the first time I had seen it in maybe 10 years. 
like I remember taping this off one of the movie channels on VHS like bootleg Back style in the day. and watching that so many times and I also as you can see maybe that is the soundtrack to this motion I picture. That was the DVD for some reason. It's like, why did we watch it on? No, that is the soundtrack that I own. I believe I may have inherited that from my sister. Which, mind you, the soundtrack came out September 11th, 2001. Mm. Was ranked 55 on the top 100 billboard. I feel like something else happened on that day. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we can also discuss how stellar my soundtrack collection is. <laughs> Wait, your physical soundtrack? My f- ones I own. Okay. So I've got Hardball. Okay. And I've noticed there is definitely a uh, there's a, a a web that ties them all together. So we got Hardball. You got Fast and the Furious. You got Space Jam, <laughs> which is amazing. Uh, and what's the last one? Armageddon. <laughs> all quality movies. <laughs> sure. Sure. All around the same time frame. Some of them sports. Honestly, I think the first soundtrack I ever had was Mission Impossible 2. Was that the one that had a lot of Limp Bizkit on it? It had... Uh, it did have Limp Bizkit as its uh, like theme song for that movie. It was... Um, shoot. It was off of Chocolate Starfish, and I can't remember the name of the song. Anyway, that was but my first... It's the one that lets you know now. My now first album. Hate me. <laughs> that was my first soundtrack from a film. And then the second one I ever owned was Too Fast, Too Furious. <gasps> Only because I wanted to listen to the fucking, uh, oh my god, ludicrous song. Too fast. Yeah. <laughs> Those, I believe, are the only two soundtracks. Oh my god. I inherited uh, Bad Boys 2. Not mm. inherited, but it just happened to be in a CD case that mm. I ended up having in my car. So, I had those three. Yeah, so if we ever need to take a, a road trip somewhere, we're definitely going back to back Fast and Furious, fast, Too Fast, Too Furious soundtrack. Uh, which, speaking of soundtrack, I just have noted in here that's a dope soundtrack. Mm, I would most of the songs on there I would still listen to. They're very R and B heavy. Mm-hmm. A lot of that it's smoother. Uh, it was one of those movies that before we watched it, I couldn't figure out what time frame it, this movie was supposed to take place. I assume it was present day at the time, two thousand one. Yeah, because that I makes kept sense. Thinking the it was kids, like, like ages was like. Most of them were like 89 for their birth year, mm-hmm. so. Because mm-hmm. uh, I mean, I've been 21 around 2001, so. When, 21 in 2001? I don't fucking know my age. Yeah. I would have been 11. What's your age again? <sighs> anyway, um, I just also want to make a side note. Earlier soundtracks, you'd think they'd have movies that were in the film, or not movies, songs that were in the film, but mm-hmm. usually they don't. They have that little tag in there that I never noticed when I bought it was. Songs inspired mm-hmm. by the movie, which yeah. is really hit or miss for you. When you're really looking for that particular song that was in there, it just happened to not be on there. And that used to really confuse the fuck out of me as a kid, because there'd be three different types of soundtracks. There'd be the original motion picture soundtrack, which is the score. You'd have motion picture soundtrack like this, where it's actual movies, or the music in the movie. And then the one you just talked about, where it's just like, oh, these are just a collection of songs from artists who may or may not have a tie to the movie. I don't know. <laughs> buy it. <laughs> right. Kind We're of just like going to uh, slap the movie logo on there and hope the sales go up. Uh, Black Panther would be a good example of that. That's true. There were some songs off that album in the movie, but it seemed like there was a lot that are just, uh, I don't know, these are hip-hop artists. and I remember and they're good. one of the things they used to do is, like, in some of those, they'd actually insert clips from the movie, like dialogue from the movie, mm. like on the in-betweens for yep. some of the tracks, which I always thought was kind of cool. But School of Rock did that. Oh, I have that soundtrack, too. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. Just keep getting more and more. Yeah. He'll pull some more out of there somewhere. I think I think that's it. Anyway, I think. should we talk about the movie? Yeah, probably. <laughs> you sure you don't want to just take, keep talking about the soundtrack? Well, you know more about that than I do, so <laughs> probs not. Well, you know more about movies anyway, too. But, you know, hey, we are here. And so the movie opens up with Mr. Keanu in a church. Mm-hmm. Um, and praying that his, uh, his team wins. It uh, really he just goes, needs him to make the spread. Yeah, but it just, it really goes to show this desperation for this man, Mm -hmm. um, which I didn't even fucking read the plot. I completely missed that. It's really short and sweet. An aimless young man who's scalping tickets, gambling, drinking, agrees to coach a little league team from the Cabarini Greenhouse Project in Chicago as a condition of getting a loan from a friend. Mm. 
short and simple. Friend. I'm still not sure what the tie I between him and the other guy. What guys. the relationship between those two are. Yeah, they clearly know each other, but I'm not sure how. Probably like high school or something. Mm hmm. I made a mention in here that Keanu is smoking like you do all the time, mm -hmm. to be honest. Aggressively, too. Like mm -hmm. they tried in a lot of those scenes to make make him look super stressed, and they tried to make sports betting really exciting. He's like, I can't see, I can't see, and he's doing the play by play, and I'm just like, ah. <laughs> I don't understand betting enough to fully grasp why they were so happy about. He's like, I'm six points on something. I don't know what the fuck. Make like, the lead spread or, or all that. No, it's it's betting per game, and it's all about the outcome points wise, like winning by X amount of points or whatever it is. But I don't fucking follow it. Mm -hmm. Same with um when they do like the the odds in Vegas and they're like you're you're a, you're a two to three or some shit like that mm. I don't know I just I just watch the sports I don't get I one. assume the smaller and bigger the number the bigger the outcome of the pay because the like less that. likely chance you yeah. are gonna win which that's the only thing I get um anyway yeah so no it opens up with him doing that where you start realizing the big old desperation why am i talking about this is your movie because you're the one that writes just the most in-depth notes for some reason <laughs> i don't know how to take proper notes folks teach me please um so i wrote basically yeah let's go back again to the church mm. um so he gets super desperate just trying so to we're get still the... within the second minute of the movie yeah yeah <laughs> there's all that soundtrack talk um um Basically, we learn that he's in huge debt with a lot of people. Mm. Um, bartender, the bar, barber, um, and then gets tracked down by some thugs, which then bust into his apartment, which mm -hmm. his mansion invests in a peephole. Yep, it would go a long way. Yeah, very much so. It wouldn't have to have those awkward conversations with Tiki. Um, so after trying to bet money on a game, get some people paid up so he doesn't lose his kneecaps, um, he goes to his friend at this security firm, who I guess he loaned money before, tried to get some money from him, and he's like, how about this? I'll give you $500 a week to coach a baseball team. Mm. Doesn't sound like such a bad gig, I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, 500 a week for that? Yeah. That pays better than most jobs. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. This is true. Um, I was also questioning, does he have to pay that back? Yeah, they didn't seem to establish that. I don't think so, because... He made it sound like the um, the loan that that guy had given him previously, he didn't expect him to pay back because he wasn't demanding anything back from him there. And this almost seemed more like uh, the other guy scamming Keanu into doing something he didn't want to do. Mm. Um, so I, I don't think he expected him to be paid back for that. It just seems very unlikely a man who's going to pay two thousand dollars a month for a dude to teach fucking baseball yeah and what if one of those months is a five-week month payday All right jesus but anyway so yeah he uh he get, he scores that cool gig then he decides to uh continue to dig his dole his, his dole dig his hole a little bit deeper by throwing down 12 grand on another game um while all in the midst of teaching these uh youngsters how to not, he doesn't really teach them how to play yeah. baseball because they, they pick just, it up really fucking they quick. They just get good. Yeah, yeah, that's one thing I wrote is like second to third weekend and they're already playing games and doing decent. Either the other teams also suck or or they're just all amazing baseball players because it doesn't seem like he has any sort of background in baseball. He just shows up and he's like... Although, well, I would uh, assume being a betting man, he understands the sport well enough to try and... And I... I do think now um, the scene where um, he's hitting the balls, he's got super good control of where he's putting those balls. Mm -hmm. So maybe he maybe he used to play, I guess. I would assume so. Because uh, he hits that line drive right at uh, whoever it was. That was. It might take a couple takes to have him do that, but, you know, well, yeah, be magic. Character-wise, though, if, he, if his character is able to do that, I would assume then he has experience in baseball. True. Um, long and short of that, then, as he's digging his hole of debt, he finally wins and catches a break, gets mm -hmm. some money in. Which um, is a horrible, horrible message. Yeah. Keep betting until you finally get yourself out of the hole, I guess. Yeah. Don't just keep sticking it out $500 a week and pay everyone off. He could have been down double what he owes just just by losing that. Easily. And then um, he's a dead man. Yeah. <laughs> um, that being said, he he gets his money and then immediately tries to quit, the, uh, quit coaching the team. Mm -hmm. Which then we have the rise of the team and then the fall of the team. Mm -hmm. And then he decides to Peaks come back to the team. And then it goes, you know. We got the, yeah, peaks and valleys. Um, so, uh, where was I? Yeah, and the team gets, oh yeah, and the team gets neutered by that jerk ass of a coach who's like, this guy's too old, he can't play. This guy's wearing headphones, he can't pitch. It's a safety concern. Um, but yeah, 
which I think was my only beef when I actually played baseball. It never got that serious, but I could always tell the coaches were more into it than the, the players. <laughs> yeah. They were just no, enjoying yeah. it. Yeah. Um, which, looking back on it, I think, honestly, if I ever played any sport, I think baseball would still be the one I'd stick with. Oh, baseball's the it. worst. It is, it's fun. No. Yeah, that's my opinion. It's probably because it's the slowest sport. That's it. Well, I mean, I, to me, it's a lot less complicated. There's not a lot of, like football, judging where in the line it was, judging if he actually made the touchdown, doing all this and that. It's like you hit the fucking ball, you catch the ball, you run. It's real simple, plain cut. Basketball, put it in the hoop. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess, but there's all those technicalities. Soccer, of kick it in the goal. Oh, don't even get me started on soccer <laughs> and the fucking rules. How many people have to be on this side with this? Don't try explaining to me. I know you tried before. I still don't quite get it. Baseball is so boring. Opinions. Curling is slower and more exciting. <laughs> it's only because it's a sport that just... It's just ridiculous. Anyway. Your um, whiteness is showing. That's okay. I am European. What do you like? Golf? No, that is the, that's slower than baseball. That's true. That's true. But they hit the ball farther. It's because it was meant to be. I'm just saying. Continue. <laughs> um, so anyway, he uh, quits the baseball team and he starts feeling like a jerk about it and gets made fun of. Um, what are you going to do? Coach baseball for black kids, oh. says the bartender. Quite the uh, oof moment. Oof. I can't um, believe he said that. <laughs> that Nick like, bastard. <laughs> um, I want to mention that the car has more spring than a damn trampoline. Oh, my God. Yeah, by the way, bounced. it looks like it'd be a nice smooth ride, though. You know, uh, maybe. Bumps. But do you remember riding in my mom's Buick where if you hit one bump, you'd bounce for the next quarter mile? You almost get seasickness in that <laughs> thing. Well, I was in the Navy. I had no problems yeah. with that. You need um, some Dramamine or something. <laughs> I did have to take that. Shit works. Um, anyway, the film is full of a lot of wholesome moments, um, like the kids, basically, he takes the kids to a baseball game, like, that's, that's pretty wholesome. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say, kind of when he goes in and gives a big old giant, uh, motivational speech, as expected, it wasn't really a speech, though, he just kind of pipes up the team for their final game, gives them an actual set of uniforms that he mm-hmm. gets from the barkeep, I'm assuming after paying back all the other shit. Um, and then, then we get the uh, the big old punch in the gut moment where uh, the G G baby ends oh. up getting oh. somebody shot you. He's a he's he's a uh, who shot ya? Collateral damage in a shootout between two gangs for some reason. Whatever they were doing. Which um, Jamal Jamal who previously got uh, kicked off the team for being too old is now a part of one of those gangs, which is. Kind of a, a shitty reality of, of urban life is. See oh, what happens when you stop playing baseball. Yep, you join gangs. Yep, that's. They even ask him like, or Keanu asks one of the kids earlier, "What do you do for fun?" He's like, "Play baseball with you." Mm. It's like that's your alternative. This this movie really kind of punches you in the face, or I guess the gut more so about really shitty living in the some of the urban yeah. areas like that, that project that housing project. Mm-hmm. You know, why is everybody on the floor? Stay below the windows. Like, oh damn. And then when. Uh, um, Tubbs gets fucking beat up in the middle of the night because he's afraid yeah. to get home. And mm-hmm. just, man, that scene always gives me anxiety too. I'm just like, yeah. I don't fucking like it. The kid's got it. So you're hearing his little slight asthma attack. He's mm-hmm. happening while while he's moving around. Mm-hmm. That was a was well thought out shot. And the camera just That's keeps scene. like shaking around and like cutting around. And then he goes inside the. Uh, um, he's inside the, like the concrete tube, Dude. which just makes it sound even worse. And mm-hmm. it's like, fuck, get, get in, <laughs> just get beat up already. Just end the scene, please. Um, um, we realize really how hardcore of a slime ball Tiki is as he's trying to pull um, Connor back into his hardcore betting. Yeah, he's a goddamn enabler. Yeah, he is. <laughs> just, just, just a twelve, six grand. Well, three, three grand. Three's fine. Just fuck off. This dude. goes against everything. That's right. <laughs> and he even fucking bets against him on the big game. Well, maybe it might have been just a joke. Never confirms. Um, then uh, they do their little big papa sing along for their mm-hmm. uh, their pitcher um, to get him going, and then uh, basically. Uh, Connor turns his life around getting a real job being a physical teacher. That's that's them slapping boots because he's he's totally fucking Wilkins. Yeah, no one can um, see your hands on that, but he's doing one of these moves. Yeah, that's okay. I Which I don't know. Him. That's a weird... <laughs> well, if you do it this way, it just sounds like clapping. Yeah, but I mean, if you're human body-wise and anatomy... It, you're just it slapping wrists. <laughs> that we're doing? You're just going... You're going... Uh, <laughs> you're not even 69 because your weight is placed. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my god. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so pow, they end up getting their trophy. So um, it, the, the the film does a they, really good cut. They went to the ship. Yes, the ship. They uh, which first I had, I thought they were screaming shit when they were in the pizzeria. That's like, what I thought as a kid. Wow. And then after that, I thought they were saying chip as a kid, <laughs> championship. But they were saying ship, championship. Boy, do you learn a lot growing up. Oh yeah, I did actually. Yes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, uh, they did a really good job um, shot sequence wise where they have G baby go up to bat and then instead of showing what happens, they cut away to mm-hmm. uh, Connor dropping off the kids and then that's when that big old whole moment happens where he gets shot and then when he's telling the eulogy, they go back again to mm-hmm. originally when G baby starts going up for bat and then he tells this big old powerful eulogy about him um, as well as how he won the game for the people. And when so he a, lifted his hands, <laughs> I felt... He lifted me. <laughs> he lifted the world. It's like I could have wrote this one. Oh, well, I've seen it a few times. <laughs> Probably like one of the top five saddest things I've ever fucking seen in a movie. I was just like, why are you doing this, G baby? You son of a bitch. Honestly, I want to say this is probably one of the more serious ish films we've watched in all 30 episodes. Because mm-hmm. usually we watch a lot of action movies mm-hmm. and uh, sci fi, and then we turn to this sports drama, which. Drama indeed. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, not well received by the critics, but I don't see all the the terrible, I guess, yeah. things that they see in it. Like thirty nine percent seems rough. It's a yeah. solid sixty or something like that. Easily, yeah. I mean, I mean, maybe they're comparing it to what was coming out at the time. That maybe. But. And it, I mean, they're not wrong. It is super formulaic. Like when you're calling a movie, <laughs> <laughs> this this is the part where they all sing. I was like, yep, 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 it is. Without a doubt. Um, but just because something's formulaic doesn't mean it's bad. It's just not going to be great. It can still be good and still and be formulaic. I don't know. It's true. As long yeah. as they play, they play it out right. Mm-hmm. But, um, anyway, go on with your thoughts, opinions, and what have you if you haven't. I've kind of uh, gone through my notes. It's the only movie that Keanu Reeves doesn't look good wearing a suit. He looked like Max Payne like, the when, whole time. When the fucking he, leather jacket. Well... And, I'm talking oh, suit, like suit. like a dress suit. Like yeah. when he shows up in class and he's clearly wearing like hand-me-down suits. That's <laughs> does not his. The pants are too short, and he's like, "Hey, why don't your why don't your pants and your shoes get together so they can have a party or some shit?" <laughs> Pro tip for all you wearing dress pants: don't wear white socks mm. with your black dress shoes mm-hmm. because dress pants aren't supposed to be all that super baggy. Yeah. So your socks are gonna show. You're gonna look like shit. Unless you work at Geek Squad, because then, I mean, that's kind of the idea. <laughs> um, it's in the name. Outside of that, uh, what, I remember the window scene fucking me up a lot as a kid. I was like, that's, that's, that sucks. <laughs> uh, mm. He beats himself up, which oh, is yeah. kind of weird. That really shows how low this guy has and what he has nothing left to lose. And he's I, like, I don't know that they... Sh- my own ass. I assume he's just plastered, which I think is one of the failings of this movie, is they don't show him delving into alcohol yeah like he he's got beers that he carries around and he takes some shots every now and then but i think they could have done some like really small montage clip like cuts of him like downing shots or something so it's mm-hmm. like oh i get it he's really drunk not just he's at a bar mm-hmm. uh, and it's also weird to think that we'll never be able to be in that environment where he's in the smoky bar mm-hmm. you see those in old movies and like i vaguely remember being in a few of them Bowling alley. That's Bowl. where I always remember the yep. most. Yep. I remember when we used to have our bowling unit for PE, mm-hmm. and we'd go to in town right down to the bowling alley, and I'd come back from there, back to the high school, reeking of cigarettes. Yep. It just smells like stale building and cigar. <laughs> uh, when he goes to meet uh, the third bookie, I can't remember his name, start with an F. Like, I wanted to say it was Fisk, but it's Fitz not. It's or close to that. Something or other. Uh, the guy from Breaking Bad with the bell. Bing, bing, bing. Yeah. Um, he like asks him. He asks him what his handle is, and it made me think that boogie handles are just the OG version of gamer tags. <laughs> <laughs> Cucum- I always thought they were saying cucumbers, like a fancy cucumba. way of saying cucumber. You should try and find out what cucumba is, because they all have these, like, all the teams have these strange names, and I assume it, it, like, goes back. Oh, can I buy a jersey? Stop. How much? <laughs> That's. Find out what a cucumber is first. <laughs> it doesn't really say. They might have just made it up. What is? Google, please help us. Oh, it has an urban dictionary. <laughs> oh, God. 
Apparently, they're the baddest of the bad. Oh, the my God. kids yeah. that run shit before kids even know how to run shit. Yeah. Cucumba has set I the did. trends of the rest of the world to follow. They only listen to the world of Keanu Reeves, and they love Sammy Sosa. I did love how hard them <laughs> kids were, though. Like, Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> Just cursing all the time. And G-Baby's like, and he said this, and he called him a bitch ass, and so he said. He gave him the rundown. Sh- <laughs> yeah, and he's like, I get it. And he's like, no problem. Like, stop. And then at the end, after uh, G-Baby dies, and they're having their they're talking the the auditorium he's like you guys still want to play yes bitch (laughs) (laughs) got him oh so good in case you guys are wondering you can buy a cucumba jersey on amazon for uh, 36.98 and free return on some sizes and colors Mm. you don't love that movie this much i might i might i just i'm gonna have to start wearing baseball jerseys though (laughs) I, mean, yeah, I don't know if I can, baseball tees. I don't know if I can commit to the look. jersey though. But it's a good. I like white and green. It's true. And it, don't I you fit. have like a whole track suit? Oh green? no! I started. I started assembling one. I never finished. <laughs> I got shoes. I, got, I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make a leisure suit uh, just in case I ever needed to hang out with a bunch of like <laughs> Eastern Europeans. <laughs> <laughs> I got the jacket. To and think the shoes. that that was a goal in your life at one point in time. So what happens when you're 18 and have disposable income? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make an Adidas tracksuit just for when I want to. I don't know. Hang out. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, look, I'm from Eastern Europe. <laughs> hey Nico, let's go ball. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that guy. Oh my god, I <laughs> honest, I didn't have a whole lot of. No, it's I just I just at this point I just watched the movie and see what you have. <laughs> I figured. I think this movie uh is to blame for my love of uh Biggie Smalls though. Uh, I I could see it. Oh, I listened to that song so many times. So many times. Uh other people on the soundtrack. You've got uh DMX. Uh you've got oh. Lil Bow Wow before he was Bow Wow. Uh, and you actually have uh, one of the first times I ever heard of Lil Wayne. Oh, yes. But he's like 16 at the time. Was he skateboarding then too? I have no Shooting idea. Shooting himself in the foot? And he had already done that. Hmm. And it was <laughs> like the chest or some shit. That was hardcore. A cop saved his life. That's why Lil Wayne never bashes the cops and raps because he's got respect for them apparently. Hmm. Cop saved his life. Calls him uncle or some shit. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> no. Okay. Do you, do you have anything else? Um, Not really. Uh, in terms of, like, sports movies you've seen, where 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 is this ranking? Towards the top, towards the bottom? I mean, clearly, clearly, Space Jam and Mighty Ducks like unparalleled cinematic achievements. No, I mean, I can't top Space Jam. Yeah. Um, let's just read my final thoughts on the film, and then I'll kind of go from there. Um, honestly, it's a pretty wholesome film. Um, it is kind of predicted as it had its ups and downs, as I was kind of calling it. Um, I don't know if wholesome is the word I'd go for. It right? has its moments, though. It's uplifting. Yeah. I guess that'd be more appropriate. Wholesome be like, it take the whole family to watch these young kids <laughs> curse the fuck out of each other <laughs> and somebody die. Well, I, I suppose some of the messages that come across and what they do, though, yeah. is a bit yeah. wholesome. Um, but anyway... Um, I liked how the film was not just about the team. It was more about a growth for Connor himself, Mm -hmm. starting at a super low point in his life, finding an opportunity where he can make some money, and then it grows more than just about the money. He forms a relationship, or I guess a bond with the kids. Um, And so I like the fact that it wasn't sports-heavy, a little bit more story-driven. It wasn't all about just the team. The team has more so of a message maybe not everything is about the one person but as a team so instead of Keanu reacting for himself he decides to react for everybody on that team Mm -hmm. Um, and then that makes you believe in something when you work together then you can achieve it but then again maybe it was like every other sports ball film but it's not my jam watching sports ball films I mean I wouldn't get hyped up for watching it but in a film overall I would I'd say it was pretty good Um, and a lot honestly a lot of sports movies are not about the the sport itself it's about either, like in this case, uh, a, a ragtag group of, of people get together and prove that they can do it. Bench or, me, oh God, <laughs> uh, I was thinking more Mighty Ducks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes it's about um, the un, unbeatable odds and coming back, um, like Miracle, which is all about like USA beating Russia in the Olympics oh, in the hockey game. Yeah, I did see that one actually. Um, 
And it does tend to seem to be like more fiction based ones will be the ragtag group versus the ones that they make based off true stories, usually more so like the unbeatable odds or the Cinderella story or something like that, where someone just comes out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Um, other ones like uh, Moneyball are less about like people playing and more about what was going on behind the scenes with people changing the way of an entire sport is played. Mm-hmm. So usually the the sport itself and the like the game, other than the very end game, takes a backseat to everything else. Um, cool Runnings, another mm-hmm. solid sports movie. True. What was the? Uh... <laughs> maybe you'll maybe you'll be able to pull the movie title from my vague description. Um, it was about a ball, and the ball had like spikes, and it was almost like a, a roller murder ball. Re- murder ball. That's yeah. The worst. Which one? The original one or the remake? I would assume the remake, the one that's a little bit more CG heavy. Oh, definitely the remake. Yeah. You know, you want to know some fun things about that? Hmm. Slipknot is in that movie. Like the band. The band the, Slipknot the is physically in that movie. Uh, they're with their masks and shit, or just like yep, the actual. They're oh, okay. playing. They're playing somewhere, and they like walk by. Hmm. Uh, also in that movie, Paul Heyman, Shane McMahon, uh, and Why someone else surprised me. Someone all? else linked to wrestling. I can't there remember some who hardcore is. sports people in this mm-hmm. fucking film called Murder Ball. And I think uh, which I never saw. I just I remember seeing the previews and thinking it was badass when I was younger and wanted to see it, but I never did. It's not great. Uh, the original so one's actually heard. pretty good. The original one is from the '70s, and it's got James Caan in it. No. Yeah, James Caan, who was the the bad guy in that uh, Eraser movie you watched. Oh. The one that plays Buddy's dad. Eraser. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah. Action films in the 80s and their one-liner. It was an 80s. That's a fucking 90s film. But either way, their one-liners in there. It was great. Um, yeah. So that's about all I have. Yeah. Uh, who's your... Actually, I guess, what was your what-the-fuck moment? I have it capitalized in here. When the when the, when the the bartender says, gonna, gonna coach some baseball for black kids mm-hmm. whoa wasn't really expecting that um really kind of caught me off guard do you feel like this movie might have originally been written as an r movie and then the studio was like hey let's make this a pg-13 take it back a bit probably because i feel like some I've... of the darker action scenes like the nighttime violence and all that shit like it could have been amped up and so i feel like they may have cut out a lot of it i think there was a couple moments in that movie too where their mouths were not matching what they were saying and it looked like they were cursing worse i noticed that a little bit but i didn't know if it was just me yeah but i i feel like there was there was two things with this movie that seemed like it was uh the studio being like reel it back and we need this so one was i think they wanted the pg-13 rating even though it seemed like it should have been an r-rated movie but then probably with having kids in it yeah yeah um which i think i think this movie would probably would have been better off being r-rated because then they could really punch like things home um and i think this studio after like test screenings was like hey he needs a romantic interest because it doesn't really seem like the sister is all that necessary in this movie other than just to be there for keanu to have someone to like be interested in to keep she, him there instead of him having yeah. to leave from for doing his betting stuff. She almost doesn't play enough of a a, a part for. She ties him down. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know if that's gonna go there. <laughs> um, but she just she seems like she needed more to do to justify her being in that movie. Because mm-hmm. I mean, if you think about what she does, she hits him in the head and then goes, "Hey, it's it's not me. It's their mom." Uh, and then she's like, hey, did you read your book? And then, oh, why did I come down here? Because I knew you were a liar. Oh, I, I still like you, I guess. There was not a whole lot else going on there. No. But they played it off like it should have been, oh, the triumphant moment. He finally got her. And I was like, oh, didn't earn it. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, my what the fuck moment was when he yelled at the receptionist when he went to pick up his first check. I don't know <laughs> what the fuck. Like, I... I, I have to believe that it wasn't written in there and he just thought it would be funny because she hands the check over and he just goes ah and she like jumps so badly <laughs> that's gonna peek the fuck out of the mic yeah i mean he does it again later in the film but not near as that uh, crazy but and like when I feel he like d- that's the only way to justify him doing it the first time when he <laughs> does it do later it it's when he's super stressed out and he's like yelling at the kids and he's like ha 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 and i'm like what the fuck it's still weird but it's not as weird as just doing it in the middle of this firm <laughs> that's nick that, that's, that's that's the, the nicholas cage, cage part. coming out yep uh what was your favorite scene um 
Honestly, I would have to say was that moment. The favorite was him being kind of insane, running back and forth from the car, because he's he's conflicted. Like he he still kind of want to latches onto that, but he's also has his this uh, obligation to be a coach for this team who relies so heavily on him. But at the same time, he's still trying to, I guess, pull away from you know. He thought he got out, but it keeps pulling him back in mm-hmm. again. Well, it tries to anyway. He, I'm out, Dickie. Up, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> he ends up uh, he ends up succumbing to the kids. Not like he was succumbing. He ends up choosing the better path, yeah. the higher yeah. road. Um, but I just liked how it played out. How he was kind of manic on it, and so I, I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Funeral so, dog. It's the funeral. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's like if you ever ever mention Harbaugh to anyone that's ever seen Harbaugh that's immediately what they're going to talk about is they're going to say something about G-Baby well it was a powerful moment honestly yep. that speech was just whew, it just lifted me up I've never never met someone that has seen that that doesn't immediately say something about G-Baby when you talk about Harbaugh they're just like oh G-Baby why <laughs> <laughs> he was the hype man he was mm. just you know he was but the, I mean you can't really come back from that either. I mean the kid died. You can't just be like, eh, you can't shrug it off. It's, right, it's no, a big yeah. impact yeah. <laughs> moment of the film. I gotta go speak with my client. <laughs> <laughs> that kid was wise beyond his years. Mm-hmm. Uh who's your MVP? Uh my MVP, uh I would say Keanu, but I already used him for the last movie. And I mean he does put forth a decent effort, but I'm going with G Baby. Um, just because of his attitude and the role he played, and overall being the team's big hype man, he was the kind of the center. He was not necessarily center attention. He was kind of in the background, but at the same time, he mm-hmm. was an important figure in the team as a whole. He was almost the glue. Like exactly. Like he never was one of the people that was starting a fight with anyone else, and everyone always like seemed to look out for him and be. They were all super happy when he finally got his jersey. Mm-hmm. Like so. it was the opposite. Normally. Like, I guess I shouldn't say normally, but from my experience growing up, um, it always seems like the younger brother is trying to tag along and no one wants him there. It seemed like the opposite here. Everyone was happy to have G-Baby around. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I agree. Yours? Uh, mm, shit. <sighs> I was thinking Keanu also, just because now being older, I got to uh, experience the Nick Cage part of it that I never noticed when I was younger, and it was super entertaining. And I feel like I should go with him because that was my initial thought. But I really want to go with Biggie Smalls. <laughs> you fucking would. Either that or the soundtrack as a whole. Because I listen to it a lot. <laughs> I think I think on principle I have to go with Biggie Smalls because on, on the whole, that has had more influence on my life than Keanu Reeves in this movie. So I'm going with Biggie Smalls. Preparation H. On the whole. On the whole. <laughs> and I love it when you call me Big Papa. They just, I, I just, I didn't like how they just kept saying that one fucking, I don't know if it's called bar, but just that, the that chorus? one chorus over and over, like, can they have switched up to like another one maybe, or continue the song a bit? I, well, so the, the idea is, everyone knows the chorus to a song, mm-hmm. but if he kept going to the next part, then it would start out with maybe like, a couple of the people known it, but probably no one else in the audience is is gonna continue on to the next bit. What's your name? What's your sign? Soon as he buy that one, I just he's getting lost. Be folks. with. He's getting lost. <laughs> don't call my crew. You will call your crew. <laughs> they only know like the single parts. Like they can't do the whole thing. But if he just sticks with, I love it when you call me big pop. But they're like, I know this part. I'm a white lady. I'll put my hands in the air. I'll wave them like, I just don't care. But if you're a true player. Anyway. Yeah. Next. That's it. That's it. That's it. We did it. We we hardballed. (laughs) We balled hard. (laughs) We're hardballed eggs or something. I don't fucking know. God damn. Uh, Yeah, so that was the film. I just wanted to also shout out on a a backside note. We do have t-shirts now. Well, a few. Excuse the mic in the way. Um, so this was made by one of our good friends, uh, Mr. Neighbor, who has his own little print thing that he does. So um, I'm going to try and get the uh, a link up to his page on there. He does custom prints, I believe custom. Anyway, just throw him a message if you got any interests. But I do have a few shirts that I might be doing, or might, I'm going to be doing the giveaway for. Don't quite have the rules on there. Mm. If you're on the Facebook page, you'll see them. I have been a little absent on there, but I'm trying to get engaged with the community, you know engage back let's have a discussion um but other than that that's all that i have do you have any any bits any ideas 
Any contributions, Mr. Editor? No, not really. Okay. Just well. kind of wondering where we're going to go after this one. There's so many well, options. It's October coming mm-hmm. up, so we're probably just going to explore Halloween films. We're going to be typical. Uh, at least I think we are. I'm just curious as to how you're going to tie it in. We're going to watch Constantine. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to fucking loop right back around. Is that legal? <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't follow the rules anyway. But yeah, no, we'll, oh, we'll figure it out. God. It'll be posted on there. I might I might bring the vote back for just that month, and uh, maybe we'll... It is a more fun month, too. It is. I mean, I'm think. I need to know your opinions on this, Mr. Editor. Can we do three? Oh, probably, yeah. Okay, so maybe we'll do three, because there's, there's a lot of trilogies out there, too. Ish. Mm-hmm. We'll Halloween, not not really like horror movies though, because they never know when to fucking stop. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> like, I'll uh, I'll invest a little bit in the budget for decorations, like we did last year too. Maybe I'll go a little bit extra. We'll find out. Halloween's mm-hmm. too much fun to not spend money on. Mm-hmm. That being said, if you've got nothing else, we are dudes watch a movie. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye. That was really lackluster. I don't know why I said that. Bye. <laughs>